Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. Hey, it's Friday. Heidi, how are you, baby? I'm good. It's Friday. Yes, it is. Hey, a recent report said it was okay for adults to be overweight as long as they were fit. What? It's not good for kids, though. The report says overweight children are at risk of premature heart attacks and strokes, but overweight adults, as long as they're fit. How does that work? If you're overweight and fit, can you do that? Yeah, you can be overweight and have low blood pressure and be okay. active and, and I be see full of muscle. And, there you go. Yeah. Well, that's, that's me. That is not, not me. That's no. not either of us. Hey, a new study shows that Americans who put in long hours at work also cut back on sleep in order to work uh, in fun activities. So they're saying you're supposed to get more sleep. Uh, cut back on work a little bit and get a little more sleep. I've been trying to do that, and it's actually been pretty darn cool. Coming up later in the program, we're going to be visiting with a doctor, Dr. Cass Ingram, about the cannabis cure. Now, when I first saw this, I was like, I don't know if I want to do a story with a guy about this, but it's actually really cool. If you tune in in the program, you're going to see what I'm talking about. He's got just great information I'm excited to chat about. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? Thought you'd never ask. It's Friday, March the 11th. Today is Dream 2016 Day. How cool is that? That's very cool. I mean, has it been that every year and it's finally 2016? (laughs) Or do you think it's every year is Dream 2015, then 2017 next year? I don't know how it works. Hey, it's Johnny Appleseed Day today. I remember stories about him. Yeah, did you know that Johnny Appleseed and Uncle Sam were related through marriage? Like the characters, but the real people that those characters are based on. Oh, I was going to say, I thought Uncle Sam was just a character. No, it, it, he was. But he the character was based on a real person. Johnny Appleseed was based on a real person. And those two real people are related through marriage. Huh. It's also Middle Name Pride Day. You okay sharing your middle name on the radio, Heidi? Sure. My what, middle name is Lee. And my middle name is? Edward. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a fan of mine. <laughs> John Edward. Just doesn't sound right, does it? Uh, also, World Plumbing Day today. You know, there's something to be thankful for right there, having plumbing. Absolutely. And it's World Sleep Day, so take a nap. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This portion of The John and Heidi Show is brought to you by Knowles Systems. If you have funds earning less than 6%, listen to this, commercial mortgage bridge loans pay 6% to 8%. That might be just what you need. You're placed in first position on loans secured by high-quality commercial real estate like hotels, apartments, and office buildings. Your principal never fluctuates in value. You receive 6% per year paid monthly, and your principal is returned in full at the end of each cycle. You never pay commissions, management fees, or asset charges, and you can make these loans inside or outside of an IRA. I'll give you a toll-free number to call, 888-547-8007. Start earning 6% now. Call 888-547-8007. John and Heidi. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. What are the odds that the car would be stolen twice in the same week? Pretty crazy. Brace yourself. It happened. A 26-year-old man from Bismarck, North Dakota, had his car stolen three times in six days. Jeez. He got his car back again every single time. The car, which is a dark purple Ford Contour, uh, was it first went missing January 20th. Then it was found by the police and then towed back to the man's house. It disappeared again just a few hours later. Once again, the police found it and they brought it back four hours after it was stolen. Does he leave the keys in it? Don't know. Five days later, it was stolen yet again. <laughs> police found the car again the next day and brought it back a third time. Each time, the car was parked in the guy's driveway and was locked. Huh. Police now suspect perhaps somebody else has a set of keys for the stolen car. Well, do y- you think? Yeah, clearly. And it's somebody just messing with them. And yeah, I don't know what the deal is. I wonder if it is just some friends. It's got to be somebody just messing with him. Pranking him. When when I was a kid, my dad told me a story about something that he did that this was mean, but it's so funny. A friend of his, this is back when the gas prices were really high and everybody started getting fuel efficient cars. His friend got a very fuel efficient vehicle and he was bragging about how great his gas mileage was. So my dad and his friends every night would <laughs> would go over to his house while he was sleeping for like a week and they would pour a gallon of gas into his vehicle. <laughs> and he was coming, he's like, Man, I got forty eight miles of the gallon. He was just bragging and boasting. And then they let this go on for like a month. 
And then after that, they went over once a week and they siphoned a gallon of gas out every night. <laughs> and he thought there was something wrong with this. That's car. fantastic. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's kind of funny, Dad. I'm going to do that. Now it's kind of hard to do that. It's a lot harder to siphon gas out these days than it was back then. <laughs> anyway, uh, apparently it's not too hard to steal cars, at least not in North Dakota, because this one, three times in six days. And you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. John and Heidi. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain, and this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. There are times when recycling can get you into trouble, Heidi. All right. Police in San Jose, California said workers who were sorting items at a San Jose recycling center last week found a large trash bag full of marijuana plants. The center collects trees and leaves and limbs and things like that uh, for composting. But San Jose police say uh, these plants will not end up that way. Instead, they're going to be held as evidence. The only hard part will be tracking down the doping recycler. Police say it could have come from anybody, anywhere in Santa Clara County. So the good news is, whoever it was, is they said, you know what, I don't need these anymore. I'm done with this. And they threw them away to have them recycled. But, you know, at least at least they're not still <laughs> using them. Or they, accidentally they got new threw- ones and got rid of the old ones. I don't know or how the- that works. Yeah, it's hard All to I say. Know is- that's something that's kind of strange. You don't see that every day. But that's the kind of thing that happens, kids, when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. Now for your moment of duh. Frances Escalara likes to watch television, and she likes to keep the volume turned up, way up. In fact, she listens to the television so loudly, she's been cited three times by Allenstown, Pennsylvania authorities for, I quote, excessive loudness. She's now in danger of being evicted from her apartment because of her loud TV watching. However dumb that might sound to you, uh, here's where the moment of duh comes in. And this is why she refuses to turn down her television volume. She says the city's legislation regarding TV noise is illegal because, are you ready for this? Sure. It's targeted at the Latino community, she says. Oh, good Lord. Because Latinos, according to her, like to listen to their television loudly. No. And if it's possible for a Latino to make racist statements about Latinos, she just did. So oh, my gosh. Go. That so is saying, insane. She keeps doing this because she says, I, I have the right because to that's listen to my TV. And she says, you're racist for telling me to turn my TV down. What the? This country. Where did that come from? This is the most ridiculous. That is I, pretty I, crazy. I, flames. Flames <laughs> on the side of my face. Heidi, take it. <laughs> Take a cold glass of water, dump it I on your head. I get so mad. Oh. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to come back in a bit, cool and calm down for our scoop of the day, which is on the way. The scoop of the day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at bluebunny.com. Now your scoop of the day. The Census Bureau is considering changing to its race and ethnicity questions that would reclassify some minorities who were considered white in the past, a move that may speed up the date of America's of when America's white population falls below 50%. Now, this comes from Yahoo. They say Census Director John Thompson told the Associated Press. No, this comes from the Associated Press. <laughs> I don't know who it comes from. They say uh, they're testing a number of new questions. The possible changes include allowing Latinos to give more details about their ethnic backgrounds and creating new distinct categories for people of Middle Eastern and North African descent. So nothing is really changing other than the questions, but they're trying to change the questions to, I guess, more accurately. Everybody needs to be pinholed into a specific race so so that there can be more racial tension and more people can be offended because my race is... Why does it even matter? Why does it matter? Yeah, who cares? I don't know. Moving on. That that question should not even be on any application. I don't think so It shouldn't. Yeah. A 24-year-old man has had both hands sewn back on by doctors in Poland. (sighs) The hands of the young man were severed by a metal cutting machine on his first day on the job. Oh, The surgery to reattach his hands at the wrists lasted for 10 hours. The next day, he was able to move his fingers. How cool is that? Oh, my gosh. Wowzers. A pizzeria in the U.K. named Crazy Pedro's has created a (laughs) cream egg pizza. 
A this what? is cr- a cream egg pizza. Like a pizza. Cadbury yeah. pizza. Oh. For the loving chocolaholics. Uh, 10-inch pizza made with chocolate sauce, marshmallows, Ew. brownie pieces, Ugh. meringue topped off with a cream egg. The pizzeria says the dessert pizza will only be available through the month of March. After that, everybody's busy getting angioplasties, apparently. Yeah, I, I don't think I could eat that. That sounds way sounds, too sweet. Yeah, I, I don't think I would order that. I'd take maybe one bite, but I would be like, yeah, I'm done. That's enough. Last month, enter, enter G. Is that how you'd say that? E-N-T-R-G-E-Y, Entergy Corp. I think yeah, that's sounds how you say like it. it. From New Orleans, was commissioned to investigate the December outage of the Indian Point nuclear power plant in New York. The report states the cause of the power failure was because of bird droppings. So we talked about that the other day. Right. Um, they say if the generator detects interference, it will cause an automatic shutdown. So now they're trying to figure out how to make sure there's no more bird droppings that fall in that particular area. So <laughs> that's, that's the kind of problems we face these days. A Harvard professor is studying a drug that may make it dramatically easier for grown-ups to absorb new skills and information, almost as if they were seven years old or younger. So they're working on a drug that will open your mind to new information like children. I think that's kind of an interesting idea. Huh. I don't think I'll sign up to try that drug. Uh, another reason to drink coffee, Heidi. Okay. Now, wait a minute. Right now, is coffee good or bad? Before we read this story. Coffee's always good. I think it's always good, too. But we read, it's like every week we have a story. One time it's good, next time it's bad. Well, this one must be good because here's another reason to drink coffee. That morning cup of java or lunchtime soda might serve a purpose beyond giving you that jolt of energy. According to a new study by researchers at John Hopkins University, caffeine enhances memory. That's good, right? Mm, yeah. Do we, do we talk about that before? I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> Thank you very much. I set you up for that. I know you did. Mexico is looking to battle the bulging waistlines of their children by banning the sale of junk food in the schools, including many traditional oh, treats geez. generations have grown up with. Getting the axe, along with modern soft drinks and sweets, will be salted tarmadine candy. I don't even know what that is. Pork rinds. I've never had a pork rind. Atoll. The thick and sweet cornstarch-based beverage Where is this? piping hot in the morning. This is in Mexico. Oh, okay. So, well, that would make sense. Why I've I don't seen, know what yeah, I've never seen any of those. About. So the kids are no longer going to be able to have their pork rinds. <laughs> I just I can't even imagine kids protesting that. They're like, finally, take them out of the machine. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's kids that like them somewhere. You ready for a strange law? Yes. Rhode Island prohibits anyone from smoking a pipe after sunset. Isn't after sunset typically when you would want a pipe? You'd think so. That is a strange law. And this has been your Scoop of the Day. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by Knowles Systems. If you have funds earning less than 6%, listen to this, commercial mortgage bridge loans pay 6% to 8%. That might be just what you need. You're placed in first position on loans secured by high-quality commercial real estate like hotels, apartments, and office buildings. Your principal never fluctuates in value. You receive 6% per year paid monthly, and your principal is returned in full at the end of each cycle. You never pay commissions, management fees, or asset charges. And you can make these loans inside or outside of an IRA. Start earning 6%. Go to CommercialMortgageBridgeLoans.com right now. What are you waiting for? Go to CommercialMortgageBridgeLoans.com. Again, that's CommercialMortgageBridgeLoans.com. John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show today. We've got a special guest joining us right now. We've had a chance to talk to him in the past, Dr. Cass Ingram. And we've talked to him about some of the other projects that he's worked on. But he's got a brand new book. And Dr. Cass Ingram is on the phone with us right now. And you said, I'm your first interview about the new book. Is that right? Yeah, brand, brand new, hot off the press. And, and the book is called The Cannabis Cure. And how long have you been working on this project? This project is uh, got about a year and a half. And I put the real uh, the pressure cooker on her because uh, right now there's a big need for some natural approach to nervous disorders. Seems like everybody's nerves are on edge, and so what we discovered in the cannabis cure and doing the research and doing some case case histories and trials is that uh, non non addictive non hallucinogenic industrial is called industrial hemp or natural hemp the same the same kind you get hemp oil or or hemp seeds from, has a, a, a lot of natural medicine in it that's great for the nervous system, great for nervous agitation, for, uh, for depression, for anxiety, for 
nervousness for fighting stress syndrome and to put a better balance in the nerves. So that's, that's a big finding. Now, a lot of people, when they hear the word cannabis, they first of all think of pot and they think of negative things. You're saying they shouldn't think of that. Well, pot is a negative because you're, first of all, smoking, uh, well, they call it weed, but you're smoking a plant, which is really... Now, if you smoke sage once in a while like the natives did, no big deal. But if you're smoking anything, you know, twice a week, three times a week, every day, it's not good. Plus, marijuana pot is raised to be hallucinogenic. We don't need any more hallucinogenic anything. There's already things like alcohol overdone and street drugs and pharmaceutical drugs as well, causing all kinds of problems with the nerves and even suicide from Valium. I don't know if you've heard of that, Valium and Prozac, Paxil, uh, causing suicide. So, no, no, the book is no to pot, but it's yes to hemp, hemp, uh, industrial hemp, which you can get seeds. It's all over the marketplace now. Protein, all over the marketplace now. Seed oil, which is fantastic material. And now what the book found is that you can CO2 extract, which is a raw extract using carbon, carbon dioxide. You can CO2 extract the, so- the stalks of industrial hemp, and within that is a plethora of fantastic natural medicines that we all should know about. I see, I'm looking through the info here, and I see I'm looking at some of the medical conditions that respond to raw hemp therapy, and I see heart and circulatory disease, fibromyalgia and inflammation, chronic lung and bronchial disorders, migraine headaches, insomnia, glaucoma, a lot of different things. Now, how do they get this in their system? Is this something that they smoke or they take a tablet, or what? what is it that they're doing to... Get this. This is beautiful. This is drops under the tongue, which would be called hemp and all, brand new material, but, but it's been out long enough to have a lot of positive case histories. Hemp and all is fantastic. What it is is a combination of the CO2 extract of hemp stock, organic hemp stock, so there's no chemicals, plus, and that's from Northern Europe, by the way, uh, plus CO2 extract of wild Turkish oregano. Now, here's the key thing. It just so happens that hemp, 10,000 years of human use, right? Yeah. Wild oregano, 50,000 years of medicinal use. But not just that. Black pepper, cinnamon, cloves, hops, all, all, all used so long, basil, they all have the same active ingredient. <laughs> The active ingredient I discovered is called beta caryophyllin. It's a cannabinoid, this, you know, so it works on the nerves. But it's no wonder we love spices. It's in wild oregano. It's in rosemary. We love these things because of the influence we didn't know it, that they have on the brain. So the, you're telling me even black pepper has something that's good for my brain? Yeah. I'm, I am set because I love black pepper. I put way too much of it on everything. <laughs> well, that's see what I mean? I mean, we love it. Uh, and, and so what we've discovered, this is a fantastic thing, is the historically used spices and herbs, including hemp, uh, have substances that actually attach to the neurons. Attach to the neurons and help the brain regulate itself. That's why when we gave... Because, you know, migraine is a great case. Migraine is dysregulation, pounding pain in the brain, right? Yeah. So we gave this hemp and all. It's fantastic material. And it's totally natural, organic, and all that. We gave this to uh, a lady with a fierce migraine under the tongue. Went away in 10 minutes. So now the, the people who are right now fighting saying we need to legalize marijuana for medicinal purposes, you're saying, hey, the, the thing that I have available right now, this cannabis cure... This is what you really need, and it's it's not hypnotic. It doesn't have all the bad side effects. So this this could be the real answer. That's right, and that's the that's the historical use of hemp. All the good without any of the bad. Without any of that. But what happened was over the years in Central Asia and in in, in India, uh, a special kind of marijuana, which is the cousin to this. This isn't marijuana. No way. Different species. The cousin was raised for hallucinogenic activity in the Indian religion at that time and in Central Asia, the Mongol Empire. In fact, the Mongol Empire popularized hashish in the Middle East. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? So, so no, we don't, this is not good. Actually, hashish is not a good thing at all. 
It's the resin is, is noxious. It creates a, a lethargy in the people, and it creates a social debacle where you're less productive. And I don't think any pot smoker would would disagree that the stuff makes you less productive. Yeah. Uh, now alcohol's worse. <laughs> Believe me, we don't even pay. It. But pot's dangerous in its own way because people say it's not a big deal. It's just weed. It's not a big deal. And then. You know, somebody doesn't know what they're doing. They get started, they eat some pot edibles, and there were some suicides. Yeah. Some guy jumped off the roof. Well, I'll tell you, this ner- this this interview has made me nervous as we were leading up to it because I'm I'm not a big promoter of, of you know, making things legal because I've seen bad things happen to people that I know. But I also know Dr. Cass Ingram. I know you, and I know you're a good guy, and I know that I said, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing his angle on this because – I, I, everything else I've ever talked to you about and everything I know about you is is very positive. So I'm really glad to hear what you're talking about is, hey, we found a way to take the good, put it in these drops you put under your tongue, and you don't have to worry about all the bad. So I think that's really yeah. cool. And the book is called The Cannabis Cure. Where do we find a copy of this? CassIngram.com. That's the best way. CassIngram.com. Make it easy on yourself. The bottom line is we need to make available natural medicines, legitimate natural medicines, that can help us and this will help our nerves if we have anxiety and you're on medication this would be a great thing with your doctor's help to reduce that and it's exceptional for inflammation uh, to support the heart of the health of the heart and migraines as well as I tell you what I've never been at the best in my game but with this stuff really good stuff Dr. Cass Ingram has been our guest uh, thank you again for joining us today I really do appreciate you taking the time to chat you betcha my pleasure Dr. Cass Ingram, nutritional physician, researcher, one of North America's leading experts on the health benefits and disease-fighting properties of wild medicine spice extracts, author of over 30 books. You can learn more on his website, CassIngram.com or Amazon as well. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by Keystone Treatment Center. Addiction is no laughing matter. Call Keystone Treatment Center toll-free at one 844 204-1055. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? In the late 1980s, MasterCard became the first credit card to feature a real person on their card. Who was that real person? I have no clue. Thank you very much. Elvis Presley. Oh, okay. Yeah, in the 1980s, he was put on a credit card. First person to be on a credit card. Uh, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? 43% of pet owners sleep in bed with their pets every night. We yep, happen we to be do. some of those. Yep. Uh, we have two pets, and they both sleep with us. Uh, they're both dogs, by the way. We don't sleep with goldfish. That would just be weird. <laughs> Unless, of course, you do it, which th- that is just fine. We've got one of those beds, though, where when you jump on it, the wine won't spill. So they're perfectly safe. <laughs> Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Colgate Toothpaste claims Tooth Fairy as a registered trademark. Do you know that? <laughs> they have a trademark on that. Huh. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? In 1984, a Canadian farmer began renting advertising space on his cows. Really? How cool is that? And our final fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Most lipstick contains fish scales. I didn't know that, actually. I found a really cool little image to put together, and uh, I've got that on our fun fact for you for today at Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by RadioReallyWorks.com. I know you're listening to a podcast, but did you know the John and Heidi Show is also a radio show? And for those of you who have businesses, you should consider using radio to advertise your business. We can even help you create some catchy little jingles or amazing radio ads that will help pull people in. Get all the details or just learn more at RadioReallyWorks.com. That's RadioReallyWorks.com. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. I cannot believe it. We're almost done with another week. And this is the weekend, by the way, where you change your clocks. I'm going to try to remember to remind you that a few times. Tomorrow night, change your clocks. Uh, You set them spring forward one hour. Hey, sing that snoring away. If you want somebody to quit snoring, encourage them to sing. Researchers at the University of Exeter in England found that 9 out of 17 snorers who sang for 20 minutes a day reduced their snoring time by about 18%. Huh. But when people snore, the loose tissues in their mouth, the soft palate, vibrates noisily. Singing helps tighten these tissues, which reduces the vibrations, according to Dr. Edzard Ernest, head researcher of the study. 
Now, do you agree with this? Do Do you think that when people sing, it'll help them quit snoring? I don't know. I sing all the time, and I snore all the time. But you so don't, I don't sing. Think it so. says twenty minutes a day. Do you sing twenty minutes a day? Not all in a row, but I bet I sing more than twenty <laughs> minutes a day. Not all in a row. Yeah, like, like not consistently, like full twenty minutes. It's like when we were talking about how much exercise we get, and I was including walking up and down the steps to our bedroom, and you're like, "That doesn't count as exercise." But I bet I sing more than twenty <laughs> minutes. You got to figure at this radio station, the average song is three minutes long. Do you don't sing along like out loud? You don't. I sing along a lot. Not when I'm songs. sitting in here. Oh, to yourself. To these songs. Oh, I okay. do all the time. I'm singing. I was singing along in the car. When we were on our way to work. Well, there you go. But but that doesn't mean that you sing 20 minutes a day. They're saying 20 minutes a day. I bet I do. I'm going to start setting my timer every there you single go. time we I should, start there singing. There should be an app for that. Every time <laughs> you start singing, it starts counting. So it'll tell you. I uh, guarantee you, if this study is correct, that you're singing less than 20 minutes a day. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I don't believe this study. I believe the study. I don't believe that you're singing 20 minutes a day. All right. That's going to do it for that. Coming up, we've got workaholics being vindicated. We'll tell you how in a bit. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you want to buy or sell an RV, go to RVWheelter.com. List your RV for free. Learn more at RVWheelter.com. Are there health benefits to being a workaholic? No. Absolutely wrong, Heidi. There are. According to a study out of Switzerland, they say that hard-driving workaholics are actually healthier and less (laughs) likely to suffer heart attacks than other folks. (laughs) The experts say those who've given up on their dreams are more likely to die prematurely than those who absorb themselves in their work in a pursuit of a goal. So you're, you're talking about me being a workaholic and I'm not healthy. <laughs> um, but the, there are other people out there that are probably a lot healthier than me that are workaholics. That's who they're talking about. They're yeah, they're talking, talking about those about guys. Me. Talking about those guys. Because the thing is, the job that I have, I kind of sit on my tuchus all the time. <laughs> probably not really the, the workaholic kind of job. A lot of other people, they're movers and shakers, you know, Heidi. And when you're moving and you're shaking, you're usually in pretty good shape. Although I've never seen anybody who's, you know, uh, really striving at their goals in life. I've never really seen them moving and shaking. I don't know why they call them that. <laughs> what do they call them? Movers and shakers. Movers and shakers. Don't get it. Coming up, she couldn't say I do. We'll tell you why in a bit. I've been to a lot of weddings, and typically they say, do you take this bride, do you take this groom, you know, do you take this man, do you take this woman? And then people say, what are the two words? I do. The shortest sentence and the longest sentence, according to some in the English (laughs) language. But she just couldn't say I do. A bride in Germany wanted to say I do, but here's what happened. In in Dolmen, Germany, there was a bride at the altar. She started to recite her vows. Before she got to the I do part, her false teeth fell out. Oh, my gosh. How embarrassing. (laughs) Humiliated, the bride scrambled out to her car, locked the doors, and refused to come out for six hours. I would be embarrassed, but not six hours in the car embarrassed. Oh, I would. I I wouldn't have just waited in the car. I would have driven away. I would have been gone. her, Her groom finally talked her into returning to the church to resume the ceremony, and they finished up six hours how later. old was this woman i don't know all i know is they've got very patient guests if they all sat there and waited for six hours i bet most right of them now, didn't wait for six hours if the groom scoots if she takes off because her teeth fell out you can leave you can go <laughs> time to go see you later yeah i hope the i hope this ends well but i'll, I'll be at home now so that's just nuts i'm not gonna sit around for six hours while she's in a car I would have just gone to the reception hall and started yeah. on the booze. Can we start the party? <laughs> Fire it up, man. Let's do this. Let me know when she comes out. I'll come back. <laughs> All right. Coming up, fatherhood. We're going to be talking about fatherhood here in just a bit. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by Knowles Systems. If you have funds earning less than 6%, listen to this, commercial mortgage bridge loans pay 6% to 8%. That might be just what you need. You're placed in first position on loans secured by high-quality commercial real estate like hotels, apartments, and office buildings. Your principal never fluctuates in value. You receive 6% per year paid monthly, and your principal is returned in full at the end of each cycle. You never pay commissions, management fees, or asset charges, and you can make these loans inside or outside of an IRA. I'll give you a toll-free number to call, 888-547-8007. Start earning 6% now. Call 888-547-8007. John and Heidi. 
Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. Don't forget to change your clocks tomorrow night. We're going to spring forward an hour, so you, you move those clocks forward one hour. Fatherhood might be getting a kick in the old testosterone, Heidi. Okay. But it may also help keep a man alive. Research suggests that dads are a little less likely to die of heart-related problems than men with no children. The study by the AARP, the government, and several universities is the largest ever done on male fertility and, and its connection to mortality, involving nearly 138 men. I'm sorry, 138,000 men. That's a little more like it. Although a study like this cannot prove that fatherhood and mortal mortality are related, there are plenty of reasons to think that they might be. Several heart disease experts have said that uh, they think there's a connection as well. Marriage, having lots of friends, and even having a dog have all been found to give you a, a lower chance of heart problems and cardiac-related deaths. So they're saying, hey, you want the grand, co the, the big kahuna, the whole thing? You want the, the best chances? Be married, have a lot of kids, and have a dog. How's that sound? There you go. Similarly, uh, uh, kids might want to take care of you, so that could help you as well, and it could give you a, a better chance for care in the long run. So saying if you're single and you have nobody to look out for you in your twilight years, that might also be a factor. So they're saying fatherhood could uh, get, a, get a good old kick in the testosterone. I can tell you, when, when I get older, I think our kids will take good care of me. They'll put me in the finest nursing home they can, <laughs> they can afford. <laughs> I don't even think they would do that. Like, Dad, we'll, we'll drive by once a week and throw a loaf of bread out the window at you. <laughs> There's, that's our plan for you. Uh, no, this is a pretty cool study. So they're saying having kids, having a dog, and being married is good for you, men. So get married, have some kids, and go get a dog. And we'll, we'll talk to you for a long, long time. Coming up, we do have some good news for everybody. That's all on the way. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always try to wrap this show up with some good news, and I think this is a pretty darn cool program right here. This, uh, this program is called the Shelter Buddies Reading Program. Have you ever heard of this, or have you seen this online? I all? have not. It's at Humane Societies of Missouri. Oh, yeah. They're really going and read to the puppies. Yeah. It's doing wonders for every creature involved, every man, woman, child, and dog involved. The concept is very simple. Teach kids to read and help them to read to shelter dogs as a way of preparing them for their forever homes, all while also instilling a great sense of empathy in the youngsters. Kids who sign up for this monthly program are encouraged to sit in front of a dog, and it's usually they'll find a shy dog, a dog that's like afraid of kids. So they'll have this dog in a kennel so they don't have to worry about the kid being mauled while he's reading the book. <laughs> Once upon a time, <laughs> what just happened? Cujo came after him. That ain't going to happen. It's, it's all very, very safe. They sit in front of a shy dog's kennel with a book, and they read to them. And this helps get the child ready. I'm sorry. It helps the child learn to read better, and it helps get the dog ready for a forever home if that home happens to have children. So that sounds great. I think it's really cool. We should read to our dogs. We should. We never read to our dogs. I talk to our dogs, though. I do, so that's too. the same thing. They never, ever talk back. Have you noticed No, this? and they really can't follow a storyline, no. so <laughs> there's really no point. So I could pretty much read them anything? Yeah. <laughs> I could read them the instruction manual for our <laughs> DVD player? <laughs> They'd be like, that is fascinating stuff, Dad. <laughs> no, our dogs are interesting dogs. We have uh, two. Uh, Mandy is a poodle crossed with a chihuahua. Miley is a poodle crossed with a... Maltese. Why can I never remember that? I don't know. I can never, ever remember that. But they're, they're sisters with the same poodle puppy for a dad, and they couldn't be more different. Mandy is like in your face, wants to... Like when you show up, she will bark until you let her know you've seen her. <laughs> Miley will go hide under the sofa or somewhere, hide under the bed, hide under something. She doesn't want any attention at all, but... I think it'd be kind of cool to read to our puppies. So you have to check into that. See if they uh, do this shelter buddy reading program at the Humane Society in your neighborhood. This is one here from Missouri, but they may do it in your neighborhood. And if you've got a child that wants to learn to read, that could be a great way for them to learn. The dog's never going to complain and say, boring, next story. You know, they're going to love it no matter what you're reading. 
Good stuff. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. Don't forget to set your clocks ahead one hour tomorrow. Spring forward for Daylight Savings Time. Time now for the bonus break. Only available here on the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. And your bonus break is brought to you by the good folks at Knowles Systems. If you haven't heard of them, well, you need to listen up because i got to tell you all about this. If you have funds earning less than 6%, maybe you should check into a better system, like Knowles Systems. They have commercialmortgagebridgeloans.com. If you've never heard of a commercial mortgage bridge loan, I'm going to tell you what this is. It's a loan paying 6% to 8%, and it could be just what you need. You're placed in the first position on loans secured by high-quality commercial real estate like hotels and apartments and office buildings. Your principal never fluctuates in value. You receive 6% per year paid monthly, and your principal is returned in full at the end of each cycle. You never pay commissions, management fees, or asset charges. You can make these loans inside or outside of an IRA. If you'd like more info on how you can start earning 6% or more right now, call 888-547-8007. I'll give you that number again in a second, but first, you might want to just check out the website if that's easier. CommercialMortgageBridgeLoans.com. Again, commercialmortgagebridgeloans.com or 888-547-8007. Let's get our bonus break started with this. Was Charles Lindbergh really the first person to fly nonstop across the Atlantic Ocean? He achieved no great fame for being the first man to fly nonstop across the Atlantic. What mo- most people don't know, however, is that two men had achieved the same goal eight years earlier. Oh. Yeah, flying for 16 and a half hours from June 14th to June 15th in 1911, Captain John Alcock and Lieutenant Arthur Witten Brown had co-piloted, co-piloted a Vischer Vimy twin engine plane nonstop from Newfoundland across the Atlantic to Ireland. Lindbergh was literally just the first person to do it alone. So he was the first person, person to fly solo across. Well, why didn't those other guys get any? I don't know. Any press? Maybe, maybe uh, people in their neighborhood know who they are, Captain ja- John Alcock and Lieutenant Arthur Witten Brown, but I've never heard those names before personally, so I think that's kind of a, a bum thing for them. Yeah, that just you doesn't know? seem right. So you're the first one to do it on your own. Okay, good for you. <laughs> that's great. I'm proud of you. <laughs> uh, I was looking to see. I thought I had something here about uh, the time change. I'm scrolling through here. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, that's not it. That's not it. I should really maybe go through all this junk. Oh, yeah, here we go. Five drawbacks of daylight savings time. See, I've been saving this stuff so darn long, and I figured if I don't use this today, I'm just not going to have anywhere to use it. So five drawbacks to daylight savings time. You ready for these? They're, ready. they're awesome stuff, Heidi. Uh, there's more time to mow the lawn after work. So uh-huh. you know, that's a drawback. So like, oh, darn it. I was going to keep putting that off. Uh, it gets... It gets later sooner. There's a drawback of daylight savings time. My snooze alarm is filing assault charges against me. <laughs> yeah, that's a drawback. Uh, another a drawback to daylight savings time. I finally have something, and I don't have anything to show for it. Okay. Oh, that doesn't... I finally save something, and I don't have anything to show oh, for it. Oh, I see. Save I an see. hour. Save. I see. Yeah, I, I read that wrong. <laughs> Even if I would have read it right, it still wasn't that it still funny. It wasn't that funny. And the best one on the list, and I went through and, and, and made sure to put this one at the top, the number one drawback of daylight savings time, it bumps the income tax deadline one hour sooner. ba dum boom <laughs> And the crowd then. went wild. <laughs> I mean, that was uh, worth it, wasn't it? It was totally worth it. It was worth all Absolutely. the scrolling I had to do to get to that thing. <laughs> all right, let's, let's end things uh, right over here. Tiny is in. During these tough times, little is the new awesome. A New York hotel is offering a touch of luxury on a small scale. The Jane Hotel in Manhattan has rooms that are seven feet wide by eight feet long. That's just a tiny bit bigger than the bed. The rooms go for less than 100 bucks a night, though. That's a micro price in the Big Apple. The Jane's roomettes have luxury amenities like a 350-thread count sheet, a flat-screen television, free Wi-Fi internet. Co-developer Sean McPherson says they wanted to make the Jane feel charming and special rather than just cramped. But guests will have to give up a bit of privacy. The rooms are so small, 
they're too small rather to have private baths so you have to share a bathroom with everybody else that's on that same floor so um I think I'd rather chip in the extra hundred bucks, yeah, I, fifty bucks, or whatever it is. I would not want to have to share a bathroom with I don't a think that's bunch a, of people. Yeah, that would just, just be weird. That's just not for me. You know, it is. It's cool that there's an option now for hundred bucks, less than a hundred bucks, to stay in New York City because that is a good deal. You know, if you're going to go to New York City, usually yeah. you're going to oh, fork yeah. out some change. So that's neat that they have the the option. But I'm telling you right now, I would rather <laughs> yeah. pay a little bit more and have my own room, like the yeah, whole me room, too. not just you know. Hey, there's a bed. <laughs> I could probably do that in the, you know, I just sleep in my car if I'm going to do that. Uh, yeah. It's going to do it for your bonus break. Brought to you by Knowles Systems. If you have funds earning less than 6%, get a better system from Knowles Systems. They have commercial mortgage bridge loans that pay 6 to 8%, and that might be just what you need. Get all the details at commercialmortgagebridgeloans.com.